Hello and welcome to Can TV Conversations. I'm Brandon Schaff and today we're talking to Chicago Bulls intern Brevin Fleischer about his experience working with an NBA team during COVID-19. And joining me now is Brevin. Hello, how are you, sir? How, sir? I'm well, how about you? Very good. Well, thank you for joining me today. You know, we got a lot to cover here. Uh, we, you know, a little short stretch of time, but you know, I want to get started here. Tell me a little bit about your position and what you've been doing with the team. I understand that you are a statistician with the Chicago Bulls and a game night operations intern. Yep, that, that's correct. So basically what I do is during the games, I take notes on different player trends, like say this is Zach Levine's 15th game with 20 points, five assists, things like that. I try to calculate all those different things. And then I send that script, that information to the media so that hopefully the media uses some of those nuggets in their stories right after the game. And does the media immediately use that for the game? They use it for the game stories and things like that. Does that get passed on to different teams as well? Um, they, the media, like the goal is that the media uses it after the games for their game stories. Well, some of those nuggets will probably be used in the pregame notes, which I don't write myself. But a lot of those same notes will be used in the pregame notes, which are given to the next team that comes in, obviously. So they do get circulated around the NBA but not by me directly. I'm writing very much for the Bulls public relations to give to the media after the game, and then that's when my job ends. Okay, and so for your job, I understand that you work at home games only, right? So have you been allowed to work from the United Center this year? Unfortunately not. You know, the way, the way Chicago is doing things, it's still, there are no fans in the stadium, and I guess they, the Bulls fell, the Bulls public relations fell, and rightly so, that I could do my job just as easily from home watching on television um, as I could being in the United Center, although I would love to check it out for sure. Definitely. And you, you've never been to the United Center before, right? I've never been. Never been. In the, I, I, I know where it is. I've driven past it. Right. I, I've, I've seen it, of course. But no, I've never been inside to watch a game. So going off of that, then how does working remotely affect your ability to do your job at a live sporting event if you're not even at the actual event? You know, actually, I, I've been thinking about that. In some ways, I think it might even make it a little bit easier because I know my Wi-Fi is fine. I know I have the game up there and then I have a lot of access to stats. So I can look around, check out the, you know, refresh, look at a lot of different pages and things like that. So I have really a lot of access that I'm sure I would have if I were at the United Center, but then I'm not distracted. I don't, there's not travel time. You know, I'm not going to and from the game. I'm really just sitting down, watching the game, doing my work and then just kind of continuing my day. So in some ways it does make it a little bit easier even if maybe a little bit of the excitement is, is diminished in some ways as well. Yeah. Do you feel, and you have, you're in an interesting position because, you know, you're not doing a report, so you don't necessarily have a report on the game. So you don't necessarily have to talk about, you know, the atmosphere and the experience. It's really more the statistics. But do you feel like, you know, an aspect of that from like a conceptualization standpoint is kind of lost? So you're saying that if I were, were if I were to be more in a reporting role, yes. would I be missing out more? I think that I think that would be the case. I think yeah, I think and a really important part of covering these games is being at the games and feeling the atmosphere, watching the players during timeouts, things like that. Like I'm only seeing what the camera is showing me as opposed to what my eyes are showing me when I'm at the game itself, but because like you said in my position it's not really it doesn't really affect me in the same way because I'm not reporting. Right. And, you know, since you're working as an intern right now, you're not working professionally, but, you know, is that something that you could see yourself poten potentially doing for an NBA team someday? I would love to. I'm really, really enjoying my time. I would, I would love to work in the public relations or communications department for an NBA team. I think that would be something I would really, really enjoy. I, I love all the, the nuances, the tidbits. I like the, like the statistics. I love searching for that stuff. I like interacting with the players, interacting with people. So I think that would be right on my alley. Yeah. Do you get to ask questions during the press conferences? No, no. I, <laughs> but another part. So the, in the statistician role, I'm doing what the stuff that I talked about before, but also in the game night operations role, I'm transcribing interviews from players, questions between the media and the players, but I'm not actually asking questions myself. Okay. And, you know, obviously the Chicago Bulls is a big franchise. You know, it's a professional team, very large market. Do you ever feel like there's any added pressure working with a professional organization like that and the, the kind of responsibility that you have to the work that you're doing? I definitely feel responsibility to the work, for sure. Now, 
if this was the Charlotte Hornets, I think I would feel just as much, you know, the same amount of pressure, the same amount of responsibility, because it's my first time working for an NBA team. That in itself is the pressure for me, rather than, you know, is this the fourth biggest market in the country or the 15th biggest market in the country? Right. And do you think that a job like this, a position like this as an intern has helped to prepare you for something that you could do like this professionally? I hope so. I hope so. I know I know that being remote, I'm missing some of the experiences that people would have in other years for sure. Right. Um, but I still think I'm learning a good deal. I'm communicating with people that in roles that I would like to have someday. So I think I'm still learning a ton and I feel much more prepared for this type of job, this type of occupation than I would had I not had this internship. Right. And was there any has there been anything so far in this season? that you can tell us just kind of based on your experience working? Has, has there been any, you know, fun experience that you've had at a game that you can think of that comes to mind? I think my most, I've had two, two things come to mind. One was the Zach Levine all-star push. So Zach Levine, Chicago Bulls shooting guard, having a great year, come, all, come around all-star break, the Bulls are trying to like push, you know, push out Zach Levine's credentials, say like, yeah, this guy should be an all-star. And I was asked to find some stats on that and kind of really help to create a document that could be used and spread to different teams talking about Zach Levine as an all-star. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is when the Bulls acquired Nikola Vucevic, that was just really cool. That was just something exciting for me. Wow, I'm getting to watch another all-star play and learn a lot, a lot more about his game. So I think those would be the two most exciting things for me. I'm glad that you brought up Vucevic because obviously him being added to the team is significant to say the least. You know, how has it changed things, the dynamic of the team in your mind? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm not, you know, I'm not there every day, so I don't know if I can necessarily talk about the dynamic. But the on, from an on-court perspective, the Bulls are running a lot more offense out of the high post than they would have with Wendell Carter Jr. So it's definitely more, definitely a more varied offense, kind of splitting between Zach Levine as one offensive hub and Nikola Vucevic as the other. And that's been pretty cool to watch the, you know, a more diverse offensive set for sure. Definitely. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens with you know, the addition there and kind of looking ahead to the future for the team. You know, how have you heard anything about how things are going to look, uh, you know, going forward into the summer with the Bulls and also just with the NBA in general? Yeah, I unfortunately I'm not privy to those conversations, <laughs> so I don't have any insight on what the Bulls front office is thinking. I know that a couple of players, they have some big contract decisions to make about Lori Markkinen and a couple other players. So I'm interested to see what they do there. And I do think that the team will be shaped differently next year than this year. I think there's guys like Markkinen, Thaddeus Young, Thomas Sadoransky. There's a lot of guys where I'm not sure what the future is, but I myself am just speculating because I don't have those conversations, unfortunately. Definitely. And you know, one of the last things here, uh, Zach Levine, from a statistical standpoint, where do you think he matches up in regards to the franchise's history? Well, you know, I've been looking up a lot of Zach Levine stats as, as part of this job, and there's only one guy that's consistently ahead of him when it comes to scoring, and that's obviously Michael Jordan. It'll be something like Zach Levine's had the 12th best scoring season. This is just me using an example, not saying that this is true, but it'll be Zach Levine had the 12th best scoring in this statistic, uh, and this many games played with this many three, and whatever, and it's just always Michael Jordan, like 10 times. You might, if Zach Levine's 11th, it's Michael Jordan 10 times ahead of him, I guess. Thank you, Brevin, for joining me today for this Can TV Conversation. And thank you for watching Can TV Conversations. I'm Brandon Chef. Have a good day.